I'm going to start with basics, assuming that uh, you have no background in this topic. Let us say you want to start a new business. You have decided to invest total 1000 into that particular business. Now there are two questions. Number one, is the business financially feasible? This part was taken care when we learned capital budgeting decision making. Second question, how to raise that money? Should we get that in the form of equity? Should we get that in the form of debt? This part we have dealt in cost of capital reading. We have also seen that we have to have a right mix in leverages. Depending on what is the business model, how much fixed operating cost we have, we will decide what proportion of that should be debt, what proportion of that should be equity. Now in this reading, we would see how this 1000 was put to use. So let us say out of that 1000, 700 you decided to invest into plant, machinery, whatever physical infrastructure was needed. 300 you decided to keep it in cash. Why would we keep this amount in cash? So that you care, take care of day to day operations. So this 300 that you've kept in cash, this portion is called as the working capital investment. Okay, so this reading is about how to make use of that 300 in the most efficient manner. Now, the typical cycle in which any business would operate, especially in a manufacturing setup, you will have cash, then this cash will get converted into inventory. Then you would, after you process your inventory, you would sell that and inventory would get converted into accounts receivable. And then you would recover money from accounts receivable and again convert that into cash. So let us say you have cash of 300 right now. You converted that to inventory of let us say 300. Then you converted that into accounts receivable of 350. Why is the difference of 50? That is your profit. And this accounts receivable you will convert into cash. Let's say you have a cash of 345. 5 being the bad debt. So, which means every time you rotate a cycle, you are left with additional 45 and the idea of increasing profitability is that you rotate this cycle as fast as possible because each cycle is generating your profit. Does that make sense? So now, let's observe this carefully. You had 300 of cash. What you decided is, out of that cash, you would make purchase of 150 worth inventory. So now we will say we have cash of 150, we have inventory of 150, our working capital is still 300. Following this, but now it is divided into two parts. Now you sold, let's say some part of your inventory, so you are left with inventory of only 100 now. And you have 50 worth of accounts receivable. Now I'm assuming no profit in this scenario. Your working capital is still 300, but now it is divided into three parts. Cash 150, inventory 100, accounts receivable 50. Now let us say you meet a new vendor and he decides that he would give you inventory worth 100 on credit. So now your inventory increased, but your cash is not increasing. Can I now say that your working capital is 400? Correct? Yes or no? Because if you take total of this 150 plus 200, 350 plus 50, 400. Can we say that working capital now is 400? No, because we invested only 300. Isn't it? Even though your current assets are worth 400, some part of those current assets are not funded by you. They are funded by your accounts payable. So we will say accounts payable here 100. And then how would we calculate working capital? We will say cash plus inventory plus accounts receivable minus accounts payable. And then why did we do minus accounts payable? Because when they give you inventory on credit, it increased your current assets. But that was not your own investment. So to offset that, you will say minus accounts payable. In the same fashion, you go to a bank and let's say you take a bank overdraft. So short term line of credit worth 100. So again, your cash will increase by 100. But we know that our investment is only 300. 
So we'll also have to reduce this liability, which is minus bank overdraft. So the definition of working capital is all current assets minus current liabilities. How you find you? So write down quick. So let's build on to this analysis further. So what we have learned so far that working capital is calculated as current assets minus current liability. Current assets, the ones we are typically looking at is cash plus inventory plus accounts receivable minus current liability would be calculated as accounts payable plus other short term liabilities. Now this topic is about working capital management, which means we will have to learn how to manage cash, inventory, accounts receivable and other current liabilities smartly. So we'll pick up these items one by one. We will start with inventory first. So now imagine there are two stores, store A and store B. During the year, total number of units that they have been able to sell, so units sold, is 1000 and 1000. However, average unit stored in their shop with firm A was 200 and firm B is 500. Now tell me which one of these two appear more efficient? A or B? A because by storing less, they were able to sell higher quantity during the year. So we can calculate a ratio which is called as inventory turnover ratio. And inventory turnover ratio in this case would be 5, in this case would be 2. And the general conclusion we would say, <coughs> higher the better. Are we fine with this? So write down this formula quickly. Assuming that, assuming that you finished writing. So a lot of people find it difficult uh, to imagine how to read this number 5. So we'll do a hypothetical scenario just to build more intuition on this. Let us say you have a store. So this is uh, one entire year. This is day 0. This is day 365. The target for us is that during the year we have to sell 1000 quantity. But at any point of time, the average inventory that we should have in store should be how much? 200 to achieve a turnover of 5. Now what does it exactly mean? This is day 0. You make a purchase of 200 inventory on day 0. Then you shut down your store and you open it on day 73. On day 73, you would sell the previous 200 quantity purchased. And then you would purchase another 200. Then you would open store directly on 146th day. On this day, you would sell previous 200 purchased and purchase another 200. This would be how much? 219. So now this is 219th day. Again the same story. You would sell 200, you would purchase 200. 292, 200, minus 200 and on this is the day you would sell remaining 200. Now if you take total of these numbers, how much we have sold during the year? 1000. Now if you go to this store at any point of time during the year, let's say you go to store here, what is the quantity? 200, quantity here, 200, quantity here. 200 which means on an average at any point of time the quantity was 200 but total sales achieved 1000. Now the meaning of that turnover 5 if you would observe we made purchase 5 and we sold 5 times. Of course in real life it doesn't happen this way. We don't close the store for 73 days but how to read that number 5 is we have been able to rotate our inventory 5 times. Does it make sense to you? 
So write down this quickly. Are we done? Now how to read those 73 days? If you would see the interval between any two purchase and sale transaction is 73. The interpretation is that on an average, from the time inventory came into your office till the time you sold it to your customer. So whatever you might have done processing or whatever other activities, it took you on an average 73 days. This is called as number of days in inventory. Number of days in inventory. At times this is also called as average processing days or average processing time. And this number is calculated as 365 divided by inventory turnover ratio. Average days in which inventory is on hand. So this is number of days. So how to best make use of this number? Let us say we have a grocery store and let's compare that with a real estate uh, construction company. Number of days inventory on hand is from the time that inventory came to you till the time you sold it. What do you think would be the inventory turnover ratio of a grocery store? Let's, let's say something like Big Bazaar or Walmart. What should be number of days? About 5, 10 days. So on an average inventory would remain in the store for 10 days. But with real estate business, your inventory is the land that you purchase and then you start your manufacturing construction activity and then you sell the final output, which is the residential apartments or commercial units. What would be number of days inventory on hand? Maybe 700 days or more than that. Typical cycle is about two years. So it would be wrong to compare different businesses, different businesses, average days on inventory. Ideally, how this number would be best put to use is, let us say you're looking at two automobile company, preferably in the similar domain. So let's say we are looking at Hero Motor Corp and we want to compare that with TVS Motors in India. And then if you find that Hero Motor Corp has average inventory, a number of days in inventory, 11 days and TVS Motors 17 days, then you can conclude that maybe Hero Motor Corp is more efficient with management of its inventory. Are we fine here? Let's move on to next number. Again, there are two companies. Credit sales made during the year by both the companies is 10 and 10. Average accounts receivable with company A is 5 and with company B is 2. Which one of these two is being more efficient? A or B? A, B, B, how many of you feel A, B, fine B is the answer because company B is being more efficient with recovery of that money, isn't it? It made total sales of 10, but it was able to recover 8 very quickly, whereas company B yet to recover 5. So we calculate a ratio here, which is called as Accounts receivable turnover ratio. Accounts receivable turnover ratio. And this would be calculated as credit sales divided by average AR. In this case, it would be 2. This would be 5. And again, typically the conclusion is higher the better. Accounts receivable turnover ratio higher the better. And again, how do you read this number 5? On an average, you've made total sales of 10, but at any point of time, average accounts receivable was 2. So if this is 365, on day 0, you made sales of 2. On day 73, you recovered 2. Then you made sales of 2 again. And in this fashion, you repeated cycle. 
फाइव टाइम्स इन अयर सो वी कैन कैलकुलेट नंबर ऑफ डेज इन अकाउंट रिसीवेबल विच शुड बी कैलकुलेटेड एज थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय इन्वेंट्री टर्न ओवर रेशियो थ्री सिक्सटी सो सॉरी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय अकाउंट रिसीवेबल टर्न ओवर रेशियो मूविंग फर्दर अगेन देर आर टू ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ए एंड बी ड्यूरिंग द इयर क्रेडिट परचेस मेड बाय बोथ ऑफ दैम इज टेन ईच एवरेज अकाउंट पेबल विथ ए वॉज फाइव विथ बी इज टू नाउ टेल मी विच वन इज बेटर हम इफ यू फील ए बी दिस टाइम ए इज बेटर द आइडिया विथ अकाउंट रिसीवेबल यू वॉन्ट टू रिसीव एज क्विकली एज पॉसिबल The idea with accounts payable, you want to delay your payment as much as possible. So in this case, both of them made purchase of ten, but firm B has already paid eight, whereas firm B has paid only five so far. So we calculate accounts payable turnover ratio, which would be calculated as credit purchase divided by average accounts payable. Credit purchase divided by average accounts payable. This would be two. This would be five. This time we will say generally higher the better. Ah, uh -huh. sorry, lower the better. My mistake. We would say lower the better. And in the same fashion, we can calculate number of days in accounts payable. Which would be calculated as three sixty five divided by. accounts payable turnover ratio number of days in accounts payable 365 divided by accounts payable turnover ratio see that applies everywhere we'll we'll keep that discussion on hold for a minute then writing this let's consolidate all the formulas now for a minute don't write just observe this carefully first thing that we calculated today was inventory turnover ratio how was this calculated we calculated number of units sold divided by average units that we have stored with the inventory now if you would open up an annual report you would not get data in terms of units that means rarely you would get data which will say that we've sold these many number of units you typically get that data in terms of rupees or dollars so we need to convert this to currency so number of units sold into <coughs> sale price or sales price per unit and into cost price per unit what would be the numerator here number of units sold into sales price per unit what would be numerator total sales the units sold into sales price per unit and this would be the average cost isn't it average units into cost per unit but then what will happen is you are multiplying numerator and denominator with different number which will change your ratio so we cannot do that so what we have to do is multiply numerator again with cost price per unit so number of units sold into cost price per unit which makes your formula as cogs and denominator as average inventory in currency have you find here so this is your revised formula which would be cogs divided by average inventory have you okay fine so all the three formulas together now in fact there are six formulas inventory accounts receivable accounts payable first we learn to calculate turnover ratios inventory was cogs divided by average inventory tell me how do you calculate accounts receivable credit sales divided by average ar and ap would be 
then we calculated number of days for number of days in inventory we would calculate that as 365 divided by inventory turnover ratio accounts receivable would be 365 divided by accounts receivable turnover ratio and 365 divided by accounts payable turnover ratio let's practice a few questions around it done writing this total sales made in a particular year is 2 million trade sales was 80% of total sales gross profit margin was 40% average inventory was 600000 average accounts receivable 400000 credit purchase is 800000 average accounts payable 100000 calculate number of days in inventory accounts receivable and accounts payable you have to find out number of days in inventory accounts receivable and accounts payable so step number 1 is to calculate turnover ratios first turnover ratio we'll calculate for inventory inventory turnover which is cogs divided by average inventory now the question does not give us cogs directly but we know that total sales is 2 million now if gross profit margin is 40% that means out of 2 million gross profit is about 800000 and if gross profit is 800000 then cogs has to be 60% which would be 1.2 million so your cogs is 1.2 million and average inventory is given as 0.6 million that would give us inventory turnover ratio of 2 how many if you got 2 then accounts receivable turnover ratio your total sales is 2 million out of which credit sales is 80% that means 1.6 is your credit sales and average accounts receivable is 0.4 that would get us a turnover ratio of 4 accounts payable turnover ratio your credit purchase is 800000 or 0.8 million average accounts payable 0.1 million that would get ratio of 8 and therefore number of days in inventory 365 divided by 2 182.5 number of days in accounts receivable 365 divided by 4 91.25 and accounts payable 365 by 4 point Do you want me to increase the level a little bit Let's make it more interesting now next question should I clear off Total sales 5 million credit sales 40% opening ar 1.5 closing ar 1.2 million opening inventory 1 million purchases total purchases 2 million
फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ परचेसेस आर क्रेडिट क्लोजिंग इन्वेंट्री वन पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन एवरेज अकाउंट्स पेएबल वन मिलियन कैलकुलेट नंबर ऑफ डेज इन ए आर ए पी एंड इन्वेंट्री ओनली ट्रिक इन द क्वेश्चन इज कैलकुलेशन ऑफ सीओजीएस रेस्ट एवरीथिंग एल्स इज अवेलेबल डन नोमन इन्वेंट्री टर्न ओवर हाउ मच इन्वेंट्री टर्न ओवर वन पॉइंट टू वन पॉइंट टू बट लेट्स डू इट टूगेदर आई वॉन्ट यू टू बिल्ड दिस फ्लो चार्ट विथ मी स्पेशली फॉर दोज ऑफ यू आर नॉट फ्रॉम कॉमर्स बैकग्राउंड वी वुड बी मेकिंग मेनी सच फ्लो चार्ट वेन वी वुड बी डूइंग कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट सी नाउ हियर we have opening inventory now your opening inventory will always increase when you make new purchases so we made some x amount of opening inventory per opening inventory we added some purchases how i want you to think of this is this purchase activity will happen half of the year so somewhere in the middle of the year we have x quantity of inventory with us now what can we do with this x quantity either we can sell that quantity and if you sell that it becomes cogs or it can remain in our closing inventory so during the year what was the amount of opening inventory with us 1 million so this is 1 what was the amount of total purchases 2 million so this was 2 that means somewhere in the middle of the year total inventory that we had with us was 3 how much of that is closing now 1.5 which means the amount of cogs for this particular year is 1.5 million done writing okay so if you just remember this flow chart there are four variables here opening inventory plus purchases cogs and closing inventory if you have any three you should always be able to calculate the fourth one so let us calculate the numbers now inventory turnover ratio cogs divided by average inventory cogs we just calculated was 1.5 average inventory would be calculated as opening plus closing divided by 2 so opening here is 1 closing is 1.5 divided by 2 which would give get us 1.25 that would get us inventory turnover ratio of 1.2 then accounts receivable turnover credit sales divided by average ar credit sales here is given as 40% which would be 2 million and average ar 1.2 plus 0.8 divided by 2 would be 1 which would get us 2 accounts payable turnover ratio is credit purchases divided by average accounts payable total purchases are 2 out of which 50% are on credit so this would be 1 average accounts payable is 1 so this ratio would be 1 and then the number of days are simply calculated as 365 divided by 1.2 365 divided by 2 and 365 divided by 